Hello everybody. It has been a while <clears throat> since I have posted a video on YouTube. I'm Nicole Renee and this channel is Enlightened Energy. <clears throat> a lot has came to light and I've had some interesting experiences since I've done a video on here. Right now, I'm actually in Tijuana, Mexico. If you're just joining the channel or just joining what is going on, I was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer <clears throat> in February of 2022, stage two. And after a biopsy, which I fought, <laughs> I, it wound up going from a stage two to a stage four in May. <clears throat> and then it went from my breast to the lymph to the bone in May of 2022. I refused all, everything, because <laughs> I wanted to do this on my own. For one, everything that I have been through through my awakening since August of 2018, the information that I have within me is detrimental for me to get out. So I understand knowing that, that there's no purpose in me dying of cancer. It's almost like it wouldn't be allowed. because I had to go through this path to be able to truly find myself, which is really sad, right? You have to go through the worst times in your life to find yourself? <laughs> I mean, come on. It'd be so much easier to go looking for yourself in your 20s rather than find yourself in your 50s. <laughs> One of the finding of myself <clears throat> was the understanding that I was on the autism spectrum and Asperger's and ADHD. That was enough for me to know that um, the stuff that I have been through and have thought and have manifested in my life was all because of me not understanding who I was and being surrounded by people that truly didn't understand their, their selves either, but better had a better way of coping, I guess you could say, with their life an easier way of coping with their life. So finding out that I had stage four cancer and then finding out a year later that I was all this other stuff. In fact, once I found out, I just kind of like shut it off. Like, okay, whatever, I'll make it, I'll make it into a good thing and go about my life. But it wasn't until I got down here to Tijuana for a mix, uh, for treatment of the cancer. Notice I didn't say, quote, my, unquote, because <laughs> words are spells. So the cancer that I am healing. While I was down here, the treatments are six hours a day, six days a week. And I mean, they keep you busy. Keep you busy, but you're kind of sitting down and la or laying down all the time. So you're kind of bored, but you're getting IVs and different, you know, treatments all the time. So I started, got bored one day and I started going through my phone and watching little shorts videos on YouTube. And then uh, somebody came up with an ADHD video 
And it was like this person with ADHD going through some symptoms and I'm like, huh. Hmm. Hmm. So then I started research or type in it more. And of course the algorithm brings you more. And then I got into, I was like, well, I know that I'm on the autism spectrum. So I'm going to type that into shorts and found some videos and, I'm, and then other longer videos. And I was like, at the end of the day, I was just mind blown because all the stuff that I have been running from was actually me. I was running from myself because I was different. I knew I was different. I know in, in high school, everybody had long hair and, and pressed Wrangler jeans. I went to a, a country school and I had a crop top and acid wash jeans with holes in them and short hair. <laughs> that right there should have told you something. <laughs> went to B school, had purple hair. Yeah, short, asymmetrical. I've done all the stuff. <laughs> I was a beautician for, had my own salon for 10 years or 15 years. I've been a, an entrepreneur pretty much my whole life because I've not been comfortable working in places with people telling me what to do. <laughs> because with Asperger's and all this other lovely chemical makeup that I have uh, been gifted with, once you figure out something to do, then you figure out the best way to do it. And it's hard being told what you can't and what you can do, you know? So, and when you have to be there and how often you have to be there, <laughs> you know? It's like when I was training horses, I worked seven days a week, sometimes from, you know, sometimes 12, 14 plus hours a day, seven days a week. And I loved it, of course, my life around me was a freaking mess. So I immersed myself in the training. So I was obsessed with the training, which is a typical autistic trait. <laughs> they get obsessed with one thing and then it's just like, and I was obsessed with the horses. And that's what I did before I had my awakenings. And then I got rid of all my horses and my horse life and got into energy and learned about myself. And I didn't realize I had cancer. Um, I had a lump in my breast that I had for probably about five years prior and I had it checked out one time and they just said it was an overactive duct gland and so I just never thought much about it and then years 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 later it started getting a little bigger so but it's like once I realized who who I am it was like this huge load it was just like Almost like I could fly after that, it felt so light. It was, it's like, well, all these traits that I've been trying to hide are actually natural and normal traits. Like you'd say stimming. You wouldn't think I'm stimming right now, but right now I have a hanky in my, in my hand and I'm kind of playing with the hanky. <laughs> I keep one on me in case I need to, you know, wipe or blow my nose or cough into it. I mean, why cough into here and wipe your nose here and then you, you're grabbing, you know, you're outside walking your nose is running, you're like, and then you grab the handle of something, and you know, if you had, if everybody had two of these, these are super inexpensive. I I got these on eBay. They're old ones. They used to use. But use one of these. Have have two or three. You know, these are washed and dried, hang up to dry in five minutes, because they're so thin, and you can cough into them, you can spit into them, blow your nose, wipe your mouth even grab the handle of something if you don't want to, you know, if they're, it saves so much paper. Even going to restaurants, having your own hanky for this, it's, look how much paper they would save. Just. So finding out and, and actually letting it sink in. See, I never let it sink in. I'm like, okay, I'm that, and I'm gonna make something really awesome out of that. So I'm gonna be normal, but yet awesome. And um, not that 
normal cannot be awesome. <laughs> I don't want to say that. But for me, I was trying to fit in to societal norms. It's kind of like when I went to the therapy center in, in Tijuana. Everybody's just laying around either in chairs or on hot beds or whatever, and they're getting their IVs and hot, they're all their treatments. And everybody's so still. And so for me, I'm super sensitive. And of course we got eclipse energy, full moon energy. We got this and that. And then I got these people all around me and I'm a spiritual stigmatic. So I am super sensitive to the energies around me. <laughs> Even the people around me. I'm like yesterday or day before, I was like so angry. I was like, Arr. and then I talked to somebody and they're like, I said, were you angry yesterday? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, ah, I knew it. It was you I was feeling. It wasn't me. <laughs> oh, I'm super sensitive. Most people would say it would be a curse. I say it's, a, it's an, ama an amazing gift. So many people out there, my age, older, younger, are just like me. And they do not know that certain things that you do to mask your traits is super unhealthy for you. I mean, it landed me in Tijuana with stage four cancer of the breast, lymph, bone, and liver. And could barely walk. Felt absolutely horrible. My whole bottom lip and chin have been numb since, it started going numb in May. Went full, full numb the 1st of July. So that whole thing was numb. Even the, the teeth are numb. So there was a tumor growing back here that was pu pushing on a nerve. And then um, I had used black salve on the breast tumor and ate a big hole in the breast. Well, it got so painful that I quit. And unfortunately, the outside around the hole uh, was cancerous and then started growing. So it started raising up like almost an inch above the skin and it had this gaping hole. And it was getting to where it was really hurting because there's so much pressure. And that's just when I came in because I had finally, uh, somebody had mentioned this place to me. And I finally got to the point where, well, I'm either gonna have to start making arrangements or I'm gonna give this one more try. And I was lucky enough to have some amazing friends and put donations out and uh, sold some stuff and we got the first three weeks paid. And then uh, and my mother and, and my family got together and paid the next three weeks in my apartment. So I have a total of six weeks here, which is great. And I want to thank everybody that's donated because I have so much to give. You haven't even seen the, the iceberg tip of it yet. Because everything that I have been researching in the last two and a half years, I have had stage four cancer of the bone, breast and lymph for two and a half years. And liver, they told me I was terminal in May of last year and said I had less than a year to live. So I figured around Christmas of last year. Well, I turned 50 this year in August and I hiked up to the farthest I could go on Mount Shasta and had my 50th birthday and meditated up there. I remember walking out of there and saying, watch me. The first two weeks I was here, I started getting feeling back in this part of my lip and chin, and I was ecstatic. Then I noticed that the swelling around was going down, and then I was even more ecstatic. That's why, because I was going to stay here three weeks and kind of see where we're going, but by the second week, I was already seeing signs that this is working. Now, the, everything else, you don't really know what's going on, but I am seeing and feeling a difference in two weeks. So we decided to go 
another three weeks on top of the three weeks and make it a full six weeks. Because of being who I am chemically, um, I don't do change very well. I'm, I'm better at it. Um, but the convenience of having my apartment here, they pick me up, they take me there, they bring me back, and it, everything has a schedule, and you know what you're supposed to do. They feed you two awesome, organic, gourmet, five-star meals a day, two, because you're there in two different shifts, either a morning shift from eight to one or one to, one to seven. And you get to eat, and then you go through all your therapies. They have hyperbaric, hyperthermic, and then all the other therapies and IVs and everything. And they do what I wanted my doctors to do, which was use a low-dose chemo and DMSO. I had mentioned this two and a half years ago to my oncologist, and she refused. She had to. She lose her license. That's why this part of my book is bringing out the AMA, the American Medical Association, and calling them out and giving you not only the backstory of how they started in the 1800s, why they started, and where they, the trajectory, where their trajectory was, who was involved. But not only that, but I'm gonna give you the complete backstory where these people that have so much power, where they come from. This way we get an idea of what we're up against. And what we know what we're up against, it's super easy. Because we live on a planet of free will. This is one of the laws of this planet, is that we have the capacity to choose because we have free will of our own energy, of our own mind. If somebody tells us not to touch a stove, we touch a stove and we do it. We had free will not to do it. You have free will to do anything you want. And when you have free will not to focus on the people that are trying to keep you in that lower density, three-dimensional, disgusting, you know what I'm talking about, part of life, so they can survive. When you pull your energy from focusing on all the stuff that, you know, social media is wonderful because we, we pull together, we've met people, we've had created societies for each of us and communities, it's wonderful. The only thing, social media was designed to be able to take you out of your power because most people, do not know how to communicate properly or know anything about energy, but all they want to do is get on there and have somebody feel sorry for them. And they keep sell telling that, or selling, yes, keep selling that sad story over and over and over. And so you're delving out more of your karma over and over and over because you're not learning your lesson of knowing your power because you brought that on yourself so you can change that at that moment through your mind and how you feel. So when we quit focusing on the things that we think we have to change, we've got to change this and we've got to change that and we don't like that and we hate that and we, oh my gosh, that and we're praying for that. That, 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 that's energy going out, energy going out and in a fear-based energy, which they're like a fear-based energy vampire sucking it out of you give us more, give us more of your energy. So when you shut that energy off and you turn your focus to something that you actually love and you quit focusing on the stuff that you hate, remember what you focus on is what you put energy to, what you put energy to you grow. So if you're focusing on the negative part of your life, guess what you're gonna get into your reality? More negative shit that's gonna F up your life. It's hard when you're going through the, the storm. It's hard. Trust me, I know. When you're going through the storm, it's hard to say, it is a wonderful day today. I feel amazing. When you can't even hardly get up and down the stairs or even sit up because you're in so much pain. Been there. I've had a lot of experiences to be able to help a lot of people to understand that if I can do this, 
which most of the world would say I am a, a minority, right? I'm not like the normal, so I am abnormal. So I would be, they consider a less developmented brain. Why would you say it's, some of us are, are, are all of us have, have a brain that is not fully developed. Maybe it's overdeveloped and it's just got so much information in there that it's, it's causing a short circuit in the brain where it's like, zzz, zzz, and then you, you get that, you know, not that balance where it creates, you know, like you're un, like an unbalanced, like ungrounded, you get fragmented super easy. So we need to teach our community and people like us and everybody else that wants to come along because this journey is going to be amazing, but learning how to ground your energy. If you can't get out and put your bare feet on the ground, which is hard for me here, taking the three breaths of life, the dowsing three breaths of life, by the time you're done with the third breath, you are so grounded in focus on point, have taken your mind out of whatever F job you were, you were making up in your head. Because, I mean, I'm a double Virgo with a sun in Leo with all that going on. So my head is just like... Blah, 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 blah. So you just got to <laughs> slow it down um, and, and find the common factor between energy out and energy in. Because if you're one of those people like me that just give and give and give and give and give until you're drained or broke or drained and broke, <laughs> you know, you just give everybody until, you know, because you put on this facade of you just really got it, right? Because when you're manifesting, why would you not put on a facade? If you want that energy to come in, you need to act like it's in right now. That's how you manifest. And right now, you guys, we are in the lunar eclipse today. Right now, the eclipse is going on in Taurus. And it's a full moon. And we just had the solar eclipse with the new moon. So between the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse, there's this energy, and if you manifested something on the solar eclipse, and you manifested the same thing on the lunar eclipse, you better be ready. Because whatever you manifested is going to be like, boom, there you go. You obviously still want it in the months, because you've had all this time to think about it, you've had all this time to purge. Have you guys been feeling it? The, the energy is just like, ah. I'm sad, I'm emotional, I'm up, I'm down, I'm in, I'm out, I don't know where I'm going, where I'm, who are you, get out of my face, I want to kill somebody, no I don't, I love everybody, oh my god, where am I at? Energy for the last month, it's like, you're not alone, everybody is, and if you can realize that everybody is feeling this energy, you can give everybody just a little bit of a break, because they're feeling it too. Be a little more compassionate when you go out, and you know the energy's tough, right? Because if you can be more compassionate, you're going to emit a compassionate energy and you're going to get the more compassionate side of a grumpy person. That's just how the energy works. They're going to meet you with whatever energy you serve them. You serve... <laughs> I got served. That day I was super grumpy. I walked in and I just stand there and just staring. And I can be really intimidating because I'm tall. And when I have like no expression on my face, I have that resting bitch face. And I don't mean to. I just like... Hmm. I've been called on it before, and I'm like, what? I'm smiling on the inside. <laughs> but she, the, the nurse, she came over, and she's like, she must have sensed that I was just, like, angry inside. Because she said something, and I said something back to her, and she walked over and grabbed the towel and turned around really fast and whipped me in the face with it. And I was just like, Phew. Like, she just slapped me in the face with that towel after, after that. And I'm like, that was instant karma for bringing a, a bad energy into a place like this. Because we live right now in, in karmic energy that's really fast. And you think your bad karma can come fast. Your good karma can come just as fast. Or faster. <laughs> the 
the biggest part of this video that I want you to take away from this is that if somebody like me and in my situation and what I've been through, you guys don't even know half of what I've been through in the background. You guys know I was married for 22 years, got a divorce. Yeah, you know about that. You know about the spiritual awakening I had right after and then the spontaneous stigmatic awakening I had right after that and then the spontaneous kundalini I had right after that and then I couldn't even function or work. I just, I just, I would, well, I was an autistic burnout from, from working seven days a week for 15 years doing training and doing so much. So I went into autistic burnout. I know that now. I can look back at my life and go, okay, that was autistic burnout. And what I did is I just turned everybody and everything off. And I was newly awoken. And all of a sudden I started seeing like these rocks that looked like they had carvings on them. And they were, and I was like, wow. And so then I just got obsessed with like these rocks. And so I got digging, I found, I dug down one time, down, just spontaneously stopped, dropped, start from my hand and just started digging. I dig up to about right here and broke into a hole. I said, if I got to my armpit spirit, I'm stopping. And right before the armpit, I broke through a hole. Pulled out pieces, carved pieces that were in a perfect three foot round hole. Yeah. Intuition is amazing if you just learn to play. The bad thing about it is in the times that I've been so stern and like trying to hold my energy so I'm not like, rah, you know, just like, it's like I have that stern, stern sharpness about me. And I don't, I do not mean to. I try to hide it. But I think it's from not understanding fully how connected I am to people. Because I can just think of somebody and boom, I'm tapped into their energy so I know how they feel. It's a wonderful gift when you're a medium. Because in a medium, I can tap into anything, it's a high vibration. I do not tap into anything, and I never have tapped into anything from the time I had my first awakening. I've never tapped into anything of a low vibration. I've always set the intentions for always a high vibration and always have protection whenever I do my meditations, especially my deep meditations. So that was never even a thought in my head going through all the stuff that I did with the, through the st uh, spiritual stigmata. That was intense, that was an intense four years. And if anybody knew truly what I had to go through, they'd probably be sucking their thumb in the corner with a blanket, rocking back and forth. Yeah, try seeing yourself die multiple times. Being yourself and seeing it happen in a 360. Feeling the knife going in energetically, but not really, but feeling it go in feeling everything, knowing everything about that situation and seeing that kind of thing so many times in four years. That way I knew who I was in my past and I could clean up that karma. I had to see all the karmic deaths. I didn't see all the wonderful lives that I had. Yes, they were wonderful lives, but they had a lot of karma. I never got to see the part, the wonderful parts. I only got to see the karmic parts, which were the pain. So going through my spiritual stigmata, it was extremely painful. It was an energetic stigmata, not a physical stigmata like the ones with Jesus and the blood and everything. That's a physical, lower dimensional stigmata. I went through one through energy because I was obsessed through energy after my Kundalini awakening. Like what is this energy going through my body and moving my body? Breaking scar tissue, breaking fusions, breaking bone spurs. 2017, I needed back and neck surgery. I was fused top to bottom with two bone spurs. 2022 CAT scan, no bone spurs, no fusions. Just by letting my Kundalini energy move my body wherever it wanted to go for hours at a time and never letting it, never bothering it. If I would have had somebody there, they thought I would have been quite possessed, but I knew there was nothing wrong what was going on. I knew that this every time it, I got, it got done, it always ended on a good note. Like my body felt better, my mind felt better and things just worked better. So I never had any bad experiences. All my experiences were amazing because I was obsessed over energy. And guess what energy is? What you would consider God. So I, I worshiped God. I did not worship Jesus. 
I knew better not to worship Jesus. When I had my, my sporadic stigmatic awakening, it was like five hours of transit, lucid state of seeing visions and clouds and all these things. My niece had to drive the horses and the truck because it just happened sporadically. I just, all of a sudden I was driving and I felt all of a sudden something unwind around my wrist and shoot up my elbow and disappeared and it scared me. And all of a sudden I felt a bite in the back of my neck. And it, I was like, ow. And all of a sudden I got this like picture of this cobra. And I was like, what? And I'm just a horse trainer my whole life in my late forties. I knew nothing about that stuff. I had seen UFOs as a kid and had seen UFOs a lot, but, and, but didn't know about anything about energy. Most of us that wake up have to go through what's called like a dark night of the soul. Well, everybody that wakes up has to go through a dark night of the soul. And most of the times it causes breakups in the family. Because at that point, you're meant to be somewhere else. You're not meant to be where you're at because you have another purpose. You fulfilled your purpose. Like for me, I fulfilled my horse training purpose. I learned how to feel. Feel and timing with the horse is everything when it comes to energy, because you get to feel you're more sensitive. So I used my talents for my horse training into how I work now as a spiritual psychic. Medium, I mean, you name it. The thing is, is we are all talented enough to have these gifts by the law of attraction. If you focus on them and then you allow just things to happen around you, like I was getting curious about these things. Like when my spiritual awakening happened, that was spontaneous. That was a 45 minute trance while I was driving truck and trailer with my niece there. And I was talking about things. I was still driving, but talking about things I don't know about. That was spontaneous. I wasn't curious about this. All I was thinking about was getting to Texas with my horses so I could go run and barrel race and show my stallion. I was not thinking about anything else. And if I would have known it was coming, I, I probably wouldn't have chose it because it was extremely painful for me because I, all I'd known all my whole life was horses. Since I was three, I had my, my first horse. And then all of a sudden, God's like, okay, we need to end this chapter. So we need to uproot you and put you over here and we're gonna start a brand new chapter. And for a person like me, that change is extremely hard. It took me almost dying to finally wake up. <laughs> but the thing is, if you know anything about Dolores Cannon, through the hip hypnotizing people, she's had people that come in with cancer and leave the office with no cancer. Proof. Not just healed cancer after that, left with no cancer. How is that possible, right? Well, the thing is, is everything is possible and everything you think of is on another dimension just waiting for you to think about it more so it can plug into your reality. Isn't that amazing? So therefore, if you can skip all the conscious bullshit mind, the subconscious garbage, and you can get right down in there to that core, and, that, and you can convince that core that that core does not have cancer anymore, guess what, boom. You just pulled yourself out of that reality and put yourself into another dimension where you're fully healed. You've already created it. All you gotta do is step into it. That's how fast the mind can work. They've proven it, proven it over and over and over again with the placebo effect. Take a sugar pill, take a, a prescription pill. The sugar pill is just a sugar pill. Nine times out of 10, there's always one or two in there that cure whatever they were looking to cure because they thought it was the pharmaceutical. It's their minds. So if you know anybody that is going through a hard time right now with cancer,
I would say if you can, I would look into this place. If you have an immune, immune system that is down and you have issues with your immune system, this place is your place to go to. This place has different vaccines that they can give you. They go, this one thing they, they can do, they go in and they take a biopsy of the tumor and then they make an anti-cancer vaccine from that tumor and then inject that into the tumor. Boom. There's like, I'm, I'm doing a, uh, a procedure on Monday that is state of the art. And if I'm already seeing this much, right now I have full feeling, well, I'd say 90% feeling this way. And just, there's, this part's still really super numb, but it is starting to um, release. I can start feeling a little bit, but this, this actually is getting to where it's almost feeling normal. And this thing is completely flat now and actually starting to close up. So all that that was raised up around there was cancer growing. Because I had actually kind of given up. I just started eating whatever I wanted and doing whatever I wanted and my body was like, yeah, okay, I guess we're going down that road. And then somebody had mentioned this place because I didn't, you know, there wasn't anything in the States that I could find that could give me what I wanted. And somebody had mentioned this place. And I looked into it and just seeing that, the, that they did the IV gravioli, the IV, um, the, it's like baking soda, the bar, um, bar carbonate bicarbonate I think that's what it's called um, and of course the IV vitamin C D's and B's and minerals and and all kinds of other things that yeah are amazing and then they do the 10% chemo with the DMSO right after it which when you starve the body of cancer or starve the body of sugar the cancer cells are like, like opening up, like looking for something, any kind of food source. And so when you're getting IV injected to 10% solution, it's almost like the um, homeopathic products where you, the smaller the number, the more potent it gets, but it's healthier for you. So it's, it's, it's a healthier 10%, but it's a stronger. So, cause those cancer cells are like, you know, give it to me. And it goes straight in and then that DMSO comes in right after it and just like seals the deal. <laughs> I mean, I had two treatments of the 10% chemo. And after two treatments, it was just like noticeably, noticeably gone down. Like overnight after like the second treatment, all of a sudden it was like, boom, I started getting more feeling. It's like, whoa, okay awesome and they keep you on a low uh, or on an alkaline diet they have um, alkaline system here in the apartment and then they have alkaline water that you drink at the clinic it's called halo water it's an interesting concept interesting concept because they use the concept of the Sun and how it affects plants the nutrients through yeah it's truly interesting great water. My body really enjoys it. So if you're interested in that, um, comment below and I can give you the name of the place. Share this video if you know anybody that has, I mean, I was stage four for two and a half years and I was past, I was a year and a half after that terminal after they told me. And when they did the CAT scan here, you know, it was from my skull down to my toes and all over my bone. It wasn't brittle, but you could just see that they were, you know, spots. And I had a couple bumps on the side here where it's bumping out of the skull.
that's what it does is it grows like little spots out of bone so I had a couple spots there and so by the doctors all they're gonna do is say go home and make plans and this place I'm telling you what from the time I walked in everybody was smiles that the whole atmosphere is uplifted and there is no such word as no or quit or anything like that it's always it, it's just it's, it's it's amazing just the having the atmosphere when you're healing is huge than being in a cold hospital where everybody is cold and nobody you know just being in an atmosphere that everybody is happy and and there for purpose you know, they're there to help you. You know, and everything about this whole situation is to help you. And that is huge when it comes to healing, to put a place like this. Because you can put all the, the stuff you want in your body, but if the mind can't get comfortable and the mind can't not be happy, then the mind's gonna affect the healing and how the body receives the healing. So the more you can put the mind at ease and the mind in a relaxed state, then the body follows suit. And this place has more of that atmosphere where it's more relaxed, it's more upbeat, it's always smiling, it's always yes, it's always, you know, there's no such word as death and terminal here. It's amazing to hear some people's stories, not just from the doctors, but other people. So if you have somebody that you know who is not feeling well, comment below and I can give you the name of this place in Tijuana. It's absolutely amazing and it's, it's first class. It's not anything that's, you know, it's first class. And it's worth every penny. It's worth, well, your life. Thanks for listening. Please share and get this out there. Please like it. Please communicate, ask questions, whatever you'd like. I like this. I like to get this channel start to pop in. And really get it out there that there is places and this is possible. This is possible. Thank you.